Page 20, the arrival of the Queen of Sheba. Ooh, that's impressive. Piece by Handel, written a long time ago. Let's look at this. This is in the key of C major. No sharps or flats. Except maybe for an accidental here and there. You know how that works. Lots of eighth notes again. One and two and three and four and. We're in four, four time. Look at these notes in the right hand at the beginning. You have a C, a G, and an E. And that's the only notes in the first line are these three notes. It's a one chord. It's a C chord. They just put the C on top because normally the C would be on the bottom. We put it on top. It's a broken chord. I only pointed out that because when you're starting to read music, if you can recognize these patterns and these things, it makes reading the music so much easier. Because immediately then, the first line, you know the whole line. You don't have to worry about all those notes. There's just a bunch of eighth notes. Now, and I'm just rotating the weight, or transferring the weight back and forth. Here. Doesn't go that fast, but that's the point, it's these notes. Until you get the second line, and then we get a like a C major scale. If you can do the scale, this is a piece of cake too. This is the fingering of the, for the scale. And then back to the C chord. Third line, now we come down here. This is the chord they're saying. Now that's fine. The second major, third line, staccato and thumb. Watch the fingering. And then lift up before you do the eighth notes. So it starts with him. And, and I like that because we need to work these weak fingers. I'm just rotating here. And then the fourth line. It's a G chord. You reach up to the fifth finger to a C chord. And then here Watch the fingering, the fourth line, second measure. It's four, three, five. We're preparing for what's coming, is all we're doing. We're changing hand positions, preparing for what's coming. This is the way of doing that. And then at the C chord, the C scale again. Back to the C chord. And last measure on that page, watch the fingering. It's, it's, it's a G chord, but fourth finger on the last one because we need it for what to come up. so in the top of page 21 you have this A minor chord going in the next measure is a G chord so watch out they, the notes may not be what you think they are see yeah then you lift up and move up it's like a between phrasing they don't have any phrasing in here but this is okay you can have silence here Second line, fourth finger on the last note there in the first measure of the second line. And then we get this passage again like in a scale. That takes us to this fun stuff on the third line. You're just going to love this. And this is a standard fingering for this kind of pattern. You're going to get it a lot. You ought to practice it in both hands. Watch this. It's a one, three, two, four. It's a sequence going up, and this is the pattern we use for it. We just use this pattern for each of these. So it's here, then here, and again, and again. It's just the same sequence, and just take it slow and easy. It's one, three, four, then a one, then a one, and a one. And I could keep going indefinitely. I mean, you, you do both hands, just pick a note. Just mirror the hands is all I'm doing. And I can come back down. I just reverse the finger. It just the, really you're going to run into that quite a bit. So get comfortable with this idea. And again, I'm just rotating here. I'm not trying to use fingers. I'm, dropping the wrist on each thumb. I want to keep the wrist loose and this is a way of doing that. You got to get the natural accent in anyway so why not? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So etc. 
That takes us to the last measure on the third line is third. It's like they don't know where they want to go, do they? They just keep doing this. And then in the last line, first measure, you get that pattern again. Except now we're going to end on a little finger. But if you can do the third line first couple measures okay, then the last line first measure should not be a problem. You're just starting on second finger. Watch the, watch the staccato. Fourth finger then. And I, that last little bit, I play those on the beat. The sixteenth note is on the beat. So it's one, two, three, four. So the left hand is just helping to provide some rhythm, not much rhythm, but the harmony. Thumb on the G. It's almost like a C major scale going down, we just didn't use all the notes. Here, right. I don't have a lot to say in the left hand, they're half notes, and you got a few F sharps stuck in there. I, hopefully you can get those, you don't need me to point all that out, just use their fingering, it's fine. At the end, at the bottom of page 21, the last line, after the whole note, and you have a couple staccatos. Finger or wrist, whichever, just both hands have it, so do the same in both hands. So whatever you're doing in the right hand, do that in the left. And that's it. There's not a lot going on in the left hand. So when you put them together, do it slowly. slowly to you? Well it is to me because I've been doing this a million years. You may have to go really 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 slow to me. Huh? Now if you're going to go this slow I would encourage you to collapse the wrist on each eighth note. It's good practice. It keeps you loose. different phrase there, lift up, second major, second line there, lift up before you go up there. And the left hand has a rest so it comes up when you play the F. in the left hand and you lift up between the G and the D because it's a different phrase. And again the last line first measure lift up between the E and the D. Separate them. A little silence. And you got a rest in the left hand. fingering they're showing in the left hand. Let's go back and look at that on page 21 and the third line down. You're starting out with a whole note and a whole rest and they're saying a two and a three to 
because this prepares you for the chord in the next line. That's a good fingering. I should have done it that way. I didn't. And then you just stay there. And you're, that's good. The good fingering. Dynamic wise, it starts out loud. This kind of an, a, 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 again, a very proud piece. The Queen of Sheba has arrived. Da da. And so you're, you're loud. To me, it's all together. I mean, supposedly the melody, I guess, would be in the right hand, but it, in my mind, it's all melody. So you don't bring out one hand over the other, just bring it all out. You're loud to start with. You're going to stay loud till the end of the third line. Then you come back down just a little bit to medium loud. So the last measure of the third line, you're here. Now you're sort of loud. Then the bottom line, first measure, you go back to loud. You're loud again till the end, the last measure of the second line on page 21. Now we're going to go all the way down to soft. So here. Now you're going to take two measures to get back up to loud. Take your time with it, plan it out. Softly. Just a hair louder, a little louder, a little louder. Now you're loud. Fourth line, first measure's loud. All of a sudden you're soft. And then the last, the last line, the first measure, you're going to go back up to loud. That's the right hand that has to go up to loud here, here. So make each beat so little, 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 and up to beat. The left hand can't do anything. You play a note. You can't crescendo that. You're it's out of it. So it's really the right hand has to do it. And then you're loud for the rest of it. Now that's the dynamics, big deal. I would play both hands about the same. Maybe you could bring the left hand down a little bit on the last line on page 21 because really it's the this stuff is what we want to hear and because it's so high up on the piano it's easy for this low stuff to overdo it, to drown it out. So careful on, you might bring the left hand down a little bit at the bottom is what I'm saying there. here. Just be careful, don't let the left hand get too loud on that part. Tempo, it says it's allegro. You can probably find recordings of this. Look for that uh, arrival of the Queen of Sheba or that HWV 67 thing from Handel. And you can find recordings. Not, they're not piano solos, of course, but you can get an idea of what it sounds like. So something like that. Just an idea that may be too fast. That's, I'm just guessing how fast it goes. But each person is going to be doing it a little differently. Now they're, they're showing pedal again, but again it's optional. And in my opinion, I, I would not use pedal on this piece. We want it very clean. This is back in the time of handle where everything was very clean. And if you put pedal on this, it's going to mess it up. Why do you pedal the first line? If you're going to pedal this stuff, then you just as well pedal that kind of stuff wherever it is. And the last measure of the second line, you're starting it again. It's different notes, but it's the same idea. So why don't? Why isn't that pedaled? So in my mind, every time I get that, I would pedal it. As I said before, I don't recommend any pedal anywhere on this, so I'm not going to show it. If you're going to pedal it, you can pedal it like they're showing. However, all of those are suggestions. So if you feel like you can pedal it somewhere else, go for it. These runs, like in the second line, 
don't pedal anything like that. You want to hear the run, you, you don't want to smear it. Uh, I mean, that's a style and effect that some pieces may want, but not handle. This kind of music has to be clean, so don't smear that up. So, I'm going to do it without pedal. I'd like to do a play with me again with you just to check the notes and the rhythms. And we're going to go real slow. I'll give us four counts. So put your hands where they go. One and two and ready and go and one and two. and two and three and 